right, we are joined today on the Cody Uses Podcast with Larry Eisenhower. He is the rec director for the Pratt Recreation Department. And uh, Green Sports Complex here in town is really one of, I'd say, the nicest complexes in the state. It's kind of evolved over the last, what, five to eight years, would you say? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, really turned into quite the complex. And you guys have had a lot to do with that. Uh, a lot of things going on this summer always brings a lot of people and business to Pratt. So I thought I'd sit down with you today and kind of talk a little bit about the upcoming summer and spring and what all you guys have going on, Larry. So thanks for thanks for sitting down with me. Yeah, yeah. Thanks thanks for having me. Um, absolutely. Uh, you know, as, as we've traveled around or as I've traveled around with, with some of our younger um, group, with, with our Husker baseball group, we have been to a lot of complexes, not just in Kansas, but in other states. And and ours rivals everyone. Um, even even before the even before our turf project this year, um, we had one of the better complexes in the state. And I, I, that's not really being biased. I I really believe that. Um, so we are looking at a ten tournament schedule this summer, which will start April first, and it will conclude on July seventeenth with our Hap Dumont twelve and under state. And we'll add an additional high school state softball tournament there in the middle in May um, that will host two one A state softball, but. We will we will be jumping out there pretty much every weekend. How does that compare to a previous year? Is that uh, more than that's, normal, or that, is that a pretty typical schedule? Uh, that's that's a couple more weekends. Um, that's actually three more weekends. We did we, we tried to kind of bridge the gap because we did miss out on a, on a couple tournaments last year um, due to the field not being ready um, for the first two tournaments, and then and then the previous year, of course, we missed out on about half the season due to COVID, um, and and nobody in the state got to play. Um, right. So we were we weren't you know specific to that, but. But yeah, we uh, we've added some U Triple S A tournaments this year for the first time um, to to try to attract some other teams. Um, if we just kind of felt like we needed to keep up um, with what was going on, uh, if we stayed straight Hap Dumont, we were we felt like we were kind of missing the boat with some U Triple S A teams in Wichita, especially. There's a large contingent over there, so we actually added a softball again this this summer. Um, last summer was the first one we had first time we had softball back in in uh, about seven years actually. So that was kind of fun. A little different, a uh, little bigger ball, a little different. I say, is one harder than the other as far as hosting a tournament, softball versus baseball, or is a tournament a tournament? Uh, it's it's similar. Softball is much faster. Um, get through games much faster. A lot more teams, a lot more games um, than baseball. Baseball typically takes a little longer to to get through the same number of teams as you would with a softball tournament. So, no, it's it's a it's a good time. We love it. We enjoy it. The turf's going to help us tremendously um, with with the weather and things going on. Um, you know, in the past we've had. You know, we've got early mornings trying to try figure out, hey, are we going to play today or no? Now we know we're going to play. It may be a little late, but we're going to play. Right, and a team committing to a Pratt tournament now knows that, yeah. hey, the chance of a rain out yep. is yep. probably minimal to zero minimal. now yep. compared yep. to in the past, which yep. is probably a big factor if you're a team deciding, hey, do we go over to Wichita or to Dodge or to yep. Pratt or play? Yep. They've got turf, I'd imagine. Yep. Things could swing in in Pratt's favor. It, it does, absolutely. And, and you know, at, at first we were we thought we were on the top edge of the turf and, hey, we're, we're getting ahead of everybody. Well, now you've got Goddard, McPherson, Great Bend, Salina, Dodge City. Everybody seems to be to be getting turf. So now it's more of a, all right, we're able to keep up. Yeah. You know, and we're going to put on a better tournament than them. Not being biased, but we are. And and so the, having the turf will just allow us to compare apples to apples with other, other places. How did all that turf project begin the turf went in was, was it last year did it start kind it started, of on the big diamond it started last year yeah. on the big diamond yep. finished towards the spring yep. um what what was the how that get was that just a matter of we do we need to keep up and turf's the next phase or was that always kind of in the back of the was that always kind of a phase five down the road when the whole thing started uh, yeah it's it's kind of been it's kind of been in our sights for a while and you know i just i kind of went to bruce and i said hey you know let's let's look at this i think this is kind of an important next phase next thing and he's like well what do we need the most and I said, that's going to allow us to attract the most teams. So that's kind of how it started. You know, big shout out to Kansas Wildlife and Parks. We got a grant from them that helped us get the whole thing rolling. And, you know, our sponsors have been tremendous. Um, Trand and Terry Arnett, uh, Stanions Wholesale Electric, um, Integreen Services. Um, you know, they've all, they've all been instrumental in helping us get to where we want to be. What uh, So the big diamond, and speaking of the Trand and the, that diamond, uh, where, where did you get the idea for the, the half fences in the dugout? Or is that something you guys saw somewhere? So or that, to me, that was, I always thought that was one of the cool things. Once I saw it done, I was like, wow, I, I've seen it at other places, but I wouldn't have thought to do that when you're thinking about just turf in a field. But that really adds an element to that field that you don't see very often. Right. We just, we just realized that with, with 
doing the turf and having the project and having the field torn up anyways, this was our opportunity to do that. Uh, Coach Hill actually um, decided, hey, you know, I'd, I'd love to do this if it's possible. Well, with the turf, that made it possible. And I love the look. I, I love the just just the aesthetics of it. And uh, so I was like, yeah, let's jump on this. And, and, and again, another shout out. Hayden Schrag was a huge help with that. And him and his dad helped tremendously with – with getting some of that stuff in, um, it was it was actually uh, it was actually kind of a it was a difficult project to do. <laughs> was uh, yeah, we kind of we had to work around them doing base work and having the the turf laid and all that stuff. But um, at the end, I think I I like how it turned. Oh, out. it turned out great. Yeah. You know, it gets the kids kind of out on the yep. field. Yep. You know, all the times. Yeah, it really turned out great. Um, and then I saw we had some new additions too. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, did the softball dugouts get a fresh wrap on them that they added do. some flair to them that looked pretty cool? Yep, they do. Uh, Coach Forshee and uh, Coach uh, Householder were out there and, and and looking at some things out there, and, and I thought they looked great too. Um, they they just put them up temporarily to get some pictures, but those will look great when they actually put them up and and uh, get them stretched. Um, I believe I believe baseball is going to do the same thing. I don't know for sure with that, so I think it'll look I think it'll be really cool. Nice. And then uh, an addition here in the last couple of years down there is the track and field yep. complex there to the east. Yep. Um, speak a little bit about that and how many events you're expected that to bring in. Yeah, you bet. Um, so the, with the track being built, we knew that we would attract some track meets. But um, with with the addition, you know, Pratt High and, and PCC and now Skyline um, coming together, I, I believe we're going to have um, eight or nine events out there this year as far as track meets go. Which are which are huge. That's huge for our community. Just bringing all those people to the community on on different days or different weekends, um, along with PCC soccer. You know they play out there. The main tenant out there as well. Um, but but the track meets are the they're kind of the the feather, um, and and it's really it's cool to see the community come together and be able to host those and host that many. It's and been a while. It's been a long. It's been a long. When while. was the last time Pratt before last year when we got the new track? How long had it been since Pratt? Had hosted a track meet, you know. I believe I believe it's been 16 years. Wow. So, um, you know, they they did they did resurface Zerger, um, the track, and and we're able in the colleges practice there, and now everybody's able to be out at the new track. Plenty of room out there. Plenty of room for the jumpers. Plenty of room for everybody to get along. You can have two teams out there practicing at the same time, and you're really not, you know, running over each other. So it's it's really a great complex. Good. Uh, speak how big the complex is and just kind of me as a business owner. And I know how hard it is to find labor. How do you find people to work all of these events, especially, you know, today? Is it you guys struggle with it, too? I mean, when I would assume most of your help is volunteer help or um, um, your we, complex down there is getting bigger <laughs> and it's still just as hard to find <laughs> people to work. It how, how do you manage that? Well, our complex is getting bigger, but our staff is not. <laughs> so, right. Uh, no, um, we we definitely we definitely have some struggles there but when it comes to hosting a track meet when a school hosts a track meet they're kind of on the hook for the for the volunteers and it helps like the, the middle school meets the high school kids help out a lot you know coach Liggett helps out with that a lot um you know the college is kind of on the hook for their own they have to have a few more officials than what a high school meet has to have and without the volunteers that we have we couldn't make it go Hundred percent. Right. Are there any any phases down the line with that area of the complex? Um, we got a new scoreboard last. Was that last year? Got yeah. got the new scoreboard up there from. Uh, did was that? I don't want to name the wrong sponsors. Um, uh, Eck and was it Tebow, Tebow and Maydew and Eck? Yep. Okay, yep. yeah, that's what yep. I thought it was. I didn't want to yep. get it wrong though. Yep. Yep. No. Nope. Um, yeah. yeah some big big thanks to those guys for for sponsoring that. Hundred percent. And you know we we've, we've currently you know just recently got. Um, We've gotten the Wi-Fi up there, so the college is able to kind of to go live with some things as well, um, with, with soccer and or track, and and on, you know, instant results with track on some of their websites with having the Wi-Fi there. Um, Do you know if the high school is going to plan on streaming I, any of their events? I don't know for sure. I know that the Wi-Fi is a necessity for the timers, the finish line of the timers. So um, that was kind of a big deal to get that to get that completed. Um, as far as, as other things that are going to be additions in, in the near future, you know, we're adding some bleachers. Um, there's talks about how can we add restrooms because that's a big concern with track. You know, you have 300 kids showing up within 20 minutes of each other after a two-hour bus trip, and they've all got to go. Right. So, so we've, we've looked at some options there. Um, but, th- but those are kind of a phase two type thing that, that we're looking at. So, uh, what are, it's one of the big buzz topics around the community lately, or kind of in the past year or so when that complex got added with the soccer and the, and the track, 
Um, and now I don't know if I read it in the paper or online or somewhere, um, is the addition to Skyline now being a member of, I, I don't even know what, what you, what do you consider it, a member of that partnership or how would I say that? Right. Um, so, so the college calls it a community member, basically they're, they're a, so, so they've bought in. Um, so both, both school districts have, have bought in now to, they've, meaning they've, they've paid into being able to use the track facility whenever needed. They can use it for practices. They can use the field. Um, they can use all that instead of doing just a, a just a piecemeal. You know, we want to we want we to rent have it a track this weekend, and, yeah. and 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 so that that really helped the college actually. Um, you know, Skyline did buy in. They're now a community partner as well as 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 PHS. Um, I think that's a huge deal. You know, we have the same deal going now at, at the at the baseball complex with, with um, PHS and Skyline both being community partners now. Where a couple of those fields will be yep. allotted to, to Skyline yep, use uh, now. Uh, yep, a couple of the south fields will now go to, one will go to Skyline baseball, one will go to Skyline softball. We do have a a, um, a community s- a sponsor that, that has kind of said, hey, we want to potentially make a donation on their behalf. Um, so some of that some of that's coming up in the near future as well. So, you know, we've got another field that, that has a name to go to, so we'll, we'll get that so that – That'll help our sponsor. You know, they'll get their name on the field, and Skyline will get use of that field on on their behalf, as well as Skyline's making some you know some concessions toward. Okay, toward well, great. So, yep. What a, I don't know if you have the numbers on this, but you know, it used to always judge events, or you know, whether it be the Miss Kansas pageant or the Pratt High Rodeo, or kind of by sales tax revenue on what they bring in that weekend. I would imagine some of these tournaments that you guys have down there have got to be in the top, you know, weekends of. Of um, revenue coming to Pratt, do you have any idea if I'm a- if that's yeah, an accurate yep, statement or not? Yep, yep, absolutely. So, so in 2019, um, Wild Kansas Wildlife and Parks they they will do a an economic impact for whatever you give them the numbers of teams, numbers of things, and they'll give you how much money comes into your community. Um, so the reason 2019 was COVID was 2020. We don't have the 2021 numbers. Tough yet, to but, base anything so, off of that year. So a good. A good weekend, one of our best weekends. Our economic impact for the city was two hundred seventy-one thousand. Wow! And that's everything. That's you know retail. That's gas. That's food. That's hotel. Do you know how that compares to other weekends or other events? I, I, or I, you know, with Miss Kansas, I'm guessing it's probably fairly similar because we fill about as many hotels as what they do. Yeah, which is the big money maker. That's the big is the hotel is the hotel. Yeah, um, it, you know. So in two thousand. Uh, 19, our economic impact for the summer for the city was 1.7 million. So, um, you know, we feel pretty good about the fact that we bring in people, you know, we did, we did a survey as well, or I guess we put numbers together, I should say. And we, we brought in about 42,000 people through the gates of green sports complex. Some of those were repeat people, you know, some of those are, um, rec kids coming through and they'll, you know, they maybe come through four or five times, but we had at least that many people through the gates, that summer. So we, we feel pretty good about the fact that, you know, especially for our sponsors, like your, your name's going to be out there and it's going to be seen. Right. Yep. And does that include any, uh, concession stand revenue or is that all separate from, um, so, so that, so that economic impact has actually nothing to do with the real dollars. Okay. So, so on a weekend, you know, a good weekend, you know, we can, we can potentially make 15 to $20,000 and that's real money between entry fees, concessions, gate, you know, the whole thing. And that's, that's before we pay our umpires. That's before we pay our people. But that's, wow. you know, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, that's why we like to, to host and have people here. Right. Have people in town. Well, that's good for everybody. Community. You know, yeah. like I said, me as a restaurant owner, right. you know, I know how big right. those weekends are when ball yep. tournaments are on town. I got now on the concession stand. I got to ask a question. Uh-huh. This guy like me with five kids, when are you going to get charge accounts set up? So I can, <laughs> so they quit coming and asking me for money every 10 minutes where I can just come up and at the end of the day, Say what's my what's my total? I will, or bill bill me at the end of the month. There you uh, go. My kids have a charge account. There you go. I will <laughs> I will let Amber. I will let our concession manager know. Hey, we we need charge accounts for guys. <laughs> and 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 the funny thing is, uh, you know, I've got kids that are obviously now teenagers and a little older, but they used to use my account all the time, and I would go and I'd be like. Why is my tab forty five dollars? Right, I've, I've had one diet Dr Pepper today. Right, well, maybe a tab's a bad thing. So maybe yeah, I better rethink yeah, that yeah. request. Well, your kids have been up here, and I kind of gave them free reign. But yeah, no. So so no, some of that stuff is is good, and we like to, you know, I I think our concession stand. Speaking of that, I think it's as good as any place you go. You know, if you've been out there, you know that we are we offer a lot, and I I feel like we offered at a good price. Yeah, everything. I mean, it's clean, the food's yep. good. Yeah, just the whole complex, like yep. you said at the beginning, top notch. Um, I think you're. 
tough to find a better one in the state, you know, for especially for the size of town that we are and, yeah. and what we've been able to put together. So, absolutely, uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's definitely a blessing for a town like Pratt to have yeah. have the use of that, and you know, thankful that everything that's been going on there. Anything else coming up that you want to touch on or? Um. Not, not a whole lot. The the one thing that we do have going on, if people have driven by, just so we can touch on it just real quick, um, the tennis courts. Oh, yeah, I, I did get, see that. What's going on there? I, I get asked a lot about what's going on there. So Putting in um, some pickleball courts? Putting in some pickleball courts. Oh, are, are you really? Actually, we really are. Oh, wow. Um, that was just a... So, so initially, um, you know, uh, Port of Loomis kind of came to us with, with some thoughts on some things. And, you know, at PCC is now at a tennis this year. Um, so they have men's and I believe women's starts next year. Um, so there was a need the, the courts were in bad shape. The Northwest court, the closest one up there by the pool was, was kind of in disrepair. So that's the one that they've got busted up now. The, yeah. That's that they're they, working on. Yep. They tore completely out. We're going clear back to bare bones. We're going, uh, you know, um, concrete doing the whole deal with that one. And then the others are just getting resurfaced. Um, those should be completed within the next two to three weeks. Um, and, and I, I, I feel like that's a big need. Um, where the current basketball court's at, for all the kids that play basketball, that will still be there. But we are adding two pickleball courts right there instead of putting them on the tennis courts. A lot of places. Okay, so where that multi-court surface is. Yeah. That, okay. Yep. Will it stay that same surface, or is it no, getting a it, new surface? It'll be, it's going to be so that surface is going to be gone. It'll be actual tennis court surface. Okay. Um, so so on the on the west side there, you'll see two pickleball courts that that run north and south. Um, so the pickleballers in town are excited about that. We won't have. We won't have the temporary standards on the regular tennis courts like most places do. These will be standalone pickleball courts. Will they have? Do, I now I can't remember. Does that court have uh, lighting like for people that wanted to play yep. after dark? You know, in yep. the summer hours. Yep, and and the lighting the lighting upgrade is phase two. Oh, okay. Kind of, but but for now the lighting is going to be sufficient for them to yeah. be able to play. Um. So so three of the courts basically have lights of the tennis courts and then the multi-purpose court has lights as well. Oh, that's exciting news. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Pick up for anybody out there that hadn't got into pickleball yet. It's, it's pretty darn fun. It's, it's fun. It's, it's becoming a, it's becoming definitely a, a growing sport. Yeah, I'd so, say so. Yep. Well, good. So when, when is all that set? To, is there a, a date for completion on that or I'm, I'm hoping within the next three weeks. So they're, oh, wow. they're getting close. It doesn't take them too long once they really get going. So. Okay. That snow probably slowed yeah, things down snow. a bit. <laughs> <The> <laughs> snow, as soon as they started busting yep. it up, so, they so got piled. <laughs> on top of i say three weeks we're in kansas that's weather permitting yeah so yeah yeah yep oh well good that's exciting news um i don't have anything else for you larry unless you got anything else you want to any new news or anything like that but appreciate you sitting down and chatting and looking forward to a a busy summer out there at green sports complex and now i'm looking forward to getting down and playing some pickleball too that'll be fun absolutely thanks for having me all right thanks larry appreciate it